Recently, we decided to take a more detailed look at the link between immigrants and crime in this country. It was really interesting. Here's part of what we found. When Donald Trump announced his candidacy for president of the United States, he triggered untold numbers of journalists and pundits by expressing his thoughts on Mexican immigrants. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. An exclusive analysis of data collected by the Federal Drug Enforcement Agency largely vindicates the president's claim that U.S. immigration policies are contributing to crime in the country. Data from each of the DEA's 20 domestic divisions shows that of the 767 fugitives with known birthplaces, 83% of them were born outside of this country. In effect, the U.S. has imported a foreign criminal class that operates a multi-billion dollar drug trade within our borders. Perhaps more surprising is what's happening within America's most violent cities, where foreign fugitives dominate the most wanted lists. In violence plagued Detroit, for example, just 7% of the DEA's fugitives are listed as born in the United States. DEA divisions in New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, Seattle, and Dallas don't list a single American-born fugitive on their most wanted lists. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. But I speak to border guards, and they tell us what we're getting. And it only makes common sense. One counterpoint to these statistics is that drug traffickers are more likely to be from outside the country given the nature of the business. There's also the fact that foreign criminals might be more difficult to track down and therefore more likely to remain on most wanted lists. But that does not change the fact that there is a strong link between lax border enforcement and the black market for drugs. But beyond the drug trade, federal fugitives remain disproportionately foreign born. Federal crime statistics, for example, show that even though just 13% of America's population is foreign-born, Mexican citizens alone make up more than 14% of the entire federal prison population. One of the most disturbing statistics uncovered was that 36% of fugitives on the FBI's Crimes Against Children Most Wanted list were born outside of this country. Those fugitives include Mexican-born Hugo Sanchez, an alleged serial rapist who preys upon young children, Luis Tejada of El Salvador, wanted for distributing child pornography, and Mexican-born Jose Antonio Barroso, who allegedly raped a five-year-old. Well, none of this is news to Ann Coulter, who spent years warning about the immigrant crime connection and been reviled for it. She's been a fan of President Trump, but she did go after him on Twitter two days ago, saying this about his falling approval rating. Quote, Trump got elected for the wall, deportations, and trade. Instead, he's doing tax cuts in Obamacare light. No surprise. Ann Coulter joins us now. Ann, thanks a lot for coming on. So that, that Thanks tweet, for having me. That tweet got a lot of attention. You, you've written a book in support of Donald Trump. I think it's fair to say you're supportive of his program. But I think what you were saying was he's not putting the priorities of his campaign at the top of his priorities as president list, and that's a problem. Yeah, no, they seem to be Paul Ryan's priorities and also just the standard GOP corporatist stuff. Um, what what um, made Donald Trump stand apart from the crowd and apart from the crowd from, from every presidential candidate for the last 20 years was immigration, trade, infrastructure, um, building a wall. Uh, obviously, that was very, very popular. A lot of people haven't been listened to all this time. And uh, look, I like tax cuts. I'd love to have my taxes cut. But 50% of the people don't even pay taxes. Um, right. I think the bigger problem now is jobs. And I, I will not hold the emperor god Trump responsible for this Obamacare light bill. But Oh, for Pete's sake, what, do, am I the last person in America who understands the free market? Actually, Son, Sean Spicer was very good today explaining to idiot reporters that, that getting rid of mandated coverage doesn't mean insurance companies won't cover it. It means, you know, Ann won't be required to pay for 15 services, actually probably more like 50 services that I have no interest in. Um, but to listen to them all talking about about how... I don't know, Congress is going to give us these things. No, Congress can give us nothing. The free market can give us things. And, and they're coming up with the premiums? No, I think, who would be better to come up with a premium? Someone whose business it is and needs to come up with a good premium to, to compete <laughs> to get my business. No, good question. And who has disease specialists and actuarial specialists or politicians in Washington. So you're, you're hearing, speaking of politicians in Washington, you're hearing some of them and an awful lot of school district officials here in Montgomery County say 
there's no connection at all between our immigration policy and this crime that apparently happened last Friday <laughs> in Rockville. You're laughing. I <laughs> I am. It is just stunning, this, this argument that, oh, well, you know, a lot of things. Criminals tell me I had to rape that girl because my mother wouldn't give me a dollar. Well, okay, but we can't control whether his mother gave him a dollar. Immigration policy is the definition of something we can control. Who comes into the country? No, there are all these Americans who wouldn't have dead children, who wouldn't be raped, who wouldn't be dead themselves or undergoing facial reconstruction surgery or be addicted to heroin, but for our immigration policy. That's something we can change. Let's change it. <laughs> well, what's interesting, though, is that the, there seems to be a profound, and we could do an hour on this, but quickly, a misalignment between what the president ran on and what the Republican leadership stands for. So on Paul Ryan, Speaker of the House website, it's a single him out, but on his website right now, he says we need to encourage legal immigration. No, that's a real position, but it's not really <laughs> consistent with what the president ran on, from what I can tell. No, and uh, Paul Ryan was the vice presidential candidate of a losing uh, presidential ticket. So I think Republicans ought to be moving to Trump's position rather than Trump moving to their position. I mean, I think what Congress ought to be doing now, I, I, I would like them to pass a, an Obamacare repeal that says there shall be a free market in health insurance so right. that those of us who are healthy and able to pay can buy a plan any normal human would want. <laughs> Start with that, you know, 80 percent of the country, and then you can do the welfare cases. But if they're not going to do that, how about they love comprehensive immigration bills. How about a comprehensive bill simply with the, most of what Trump wants to do on immigration, he can do because he's president of the United States. But look at how the courts have reacted. Just let yeah. Congress go through and endorse everything Trump wants to do. Well, well, that's right. I mean, and by the way, our laws are supposed to come from Congress, keep in mind, as you know. Ann Coulter, thanks for joining us.